The topic of this presentation is on complications from closure devices. Current uh, FDA-approved closure devices for five to seven French sheath include a variety of devices that are listed here. Uh, there are uh, unique characteristics for each of the devices, as mentioned here. Uh, ProStar XL is one of the oldest devices that has been used um, since 1994. It has a braided suture and it's a 10 French uh, device. ProGlide is a newer version of a closure device which is suture mediated, similar to ProStar. The only difference is it has a monofilament suture rather than braided suture and uh, both of them are from Abbott uh, Vascular. Another Abbott Vascular device is StarClose SE that uses nitinol uh, clip and this device is uh, uh, not as frequently used as ProStar. Cordis and Cardinal Health have several devices, Exoseal, Minx Grip, and uh, the newest comer is Minx Control. Uh, this uh, device uses extravascular PGA plug and extravascular PGA PEG sealant. Another one is uh, by Cardiva Medical that started with um, a boomerang and then Catalyst 1, 2, and 3, and the latest one is Vascade. It uses uh, kaolin and chitosin and protamin in earlier generation devices, and more recently it uses uh, collagen for controlling the bleeding. Uh, Fish by Mars, innovative device is rarely used. Uh, it uses SIS arterial plug. And finally, Turumo has several devices, um, AngioSeal VIP and more recently AngioSeal Evolution that uses collagen plug and bioabsorbable anchor. Now, a variety of vascular closure devices uh, have been tried and they all have their idiosyncrasies and complexities and complications related to the use of those devices. As far as uh, vascular closure devices are concerned and incidents of complications, the most common one is bleeding that is seen in roughly about 70% of patients that are referred to surgery. Infection is the second most common type of complication that is roughly occurring in about 39% of uh, cases. And finally, ischemia occurs in about 28% of cases of patients that are referred to surgery. Pseudoaneurysm is present in about 20% of patients that are referred for surgery. Manual compression also has um, uh, obviously complications related to this particular technique. And the most common complication is occurrence of pseudoaneurysm that occurs in about 71% of cases that are referred to surgery. Hemorrhage is the second most common one and occurs in about 32% of patients. And finally, AV fistula in about 15% of patients. When we look at the meta-analysis and studies in more than 10,000 of patients related to incidence of complications with the use of vascular closure devices versus manual compression, we can see that the incidence of vascular complications with vascular closure devices occurs somewhere between 1.1% to 2.5%. What we can see is that in most of the studies, when compared the vascular closure devices and manual compression, the risk of complication is somewhat higher with vascular closure devices than with manual compression. So vascular co closure devices in general do not decrease the incidence of vascular complications. They only save time as far as length of uh, being bedridden after the procedure. Here's one of the studies, so-called RESPECT, prospective randomized clinical trial that compared manual compression to a variety of devices, including angioseal, Perclose, ProGlide, StarClose, Minx, uh, Exoseal, and uh, what we can see here 
is that one of the lowest incidence of vascular complications as far as major complications are concerned occurs with manual compression. All the other ones have a significantly higher incidence of um, vascular complications uh, than manual compression except for exoseal and vascade. We can see that uh, certain devices have uh, low incidence of minor vascular complications and certain ones such as exoseal has a significantly higher incidence of vascular complications uh, which are qualified as minor which probably relates in most of the occasions to bleeding and occurrence of hematoma. One of the most important factors as far as complications are concerned related to the use of vascular closure devices is operator experience. As we can see here, there is a significant learning curve for most of the vascular closure devices and really the incidence of vascular complications drops significantly after the operator gains experience in over 250 to 350 cases. And after that, we achieve a certain plateau and significantly lower incidence of vascular complication than in the first 25 or 75 or 100 cases. A variety of vascular complications can occur with the use of vascular closure devices. And here is one of the examples in a relatively young individual that had um, a procedure done. This was a diagnostic procedure with the use of collagen-based closure device. You can see thrombosis, occlusion of the left um, iliac artery. In this particular patient, intervention was performed with thrombolysis and mechanical thrombectomy to reestablish the flow to the left lower extremity. Another relatively common complication, particularly for those that are not using in vascular ultrasound to gain access at the common femoral artery is the stick that is too high and bleeding in the retroperitoneum as shown here. So retroperitoneal bleeding can carry significant consequences and it should be avoided by all means because uh, this is probably one of the most uh, traumatic and a serious complication that can occur due to suboptimal imaging and uh, suboptimal access when using vascular closure devices. Now, what about large bore vascular closure devices, which are devices for accesses larger than 10 French and all the way up to 25 French? In the United States at the present time, we have three devices that are approved for clinical use. The oldest one is ProStar Excel. It's a 10 French braided suture immediate vascular closure device that has been approved in the European Union for large bore femoral artery closure all the way up to 24 French, but not in the United States. This device has a prolonged learning curve, has over 30 steps to be able to uh, deploy the device safely, and for that particular reason is not very extensively used. Another device is ProGlide, which is a six French suture mediated monofilament vascular closure device that is approved in the United States for large bore closure all the way from 12 French to 21 French OD. This device is very commonly used uh, for diagnostic and also interventional procedures it has a significantly shorter learning curve than ProStar, and uh, uh, therefore it uh, offers to the operators uh, great results with a relatively short experience and short learning curve. One of the disadvantages of this device is that frequently it will require the use of two devices for large bore accesses, and occasionally, if you have a failure of Hemostasis, three devices might be used for large bore access such as 21 French or all the way to 24 French, which is not uncommon for TVAR procedures and also for TAVR procedures. 
More recently, we have a Manta device that has been approved for clinical use for large bore access. And uh, there are two devices, 14 French device and 18 French device. Those devices are approved in the United States and also abroad in European Union for large bore access repair all the way to 25 French OD. This device has a shorter learning curve and what is also very important, this device can be used after the intervention, so it means at the end of the procedure, which is advantageous in certain scenarios such as emergency cases, ruptured abdominal and ruptured thoracic aortic aneurysms. What is very important is that suture immediate closure devices such as ProGlide and ProStar can be only used in a pre-closed fashion. It means at the end of the procedure, we cannot use those devices. They have to be used at the beginning of the procedure, with, which adds extra time. Manta, on the other hand, has advantages because it can be used at the end of the procedure and it saves time. Some of the complications related to large bore closure devices are, for instance, ProStar has uh, complexities, as we have mentioned, as far as deployment is concerned, but also it cannot be used in certain scenarios or has a significantly higher incidence of complications when we deal with calcifications, excessive fibrosis or scarring post-surgery, or the use of previous closure devices, and also lack of operator experience or inexperience with this particular device. Very rarely we can encounter faulty device, but that probably is very rare. As far as uh, per-close ProGlide is concerned, uh, this device is um, commonly used, and uh, the advantages are that it can uh, be used over the wire, and in case if we have a failure of closure, another device can be used uh, to prevent complications such as shown here with hematoma, bleeding, uh, retroperitoneal hematoma, and so on. Occasionally, if this device is not properly used, or if we have significantly diseased arteries with atheroma, we can encounter the section as it is shown in the lower picture on the right hand side. And then this particular complication can lead to thrombosis, embolization, and occlusion, occlusion of the access site artery. Here's another example of a patient uh, that uh, had uh, the procedure done via left femoral approach for TAVR with large bore sheath all the way up to 24 French sheath. We can see before TAVR, the access site uh, was accessed with a micropuncture needle. We can see the artery was normal in size without any evidence of significant obstruction. And at the end of the procedure, after deployment of a collagen-based large bore closure device, we can see occlusion of the access site and thrombosis at the access site. So uh, one has to take images from the control lateral approach or use uh, the ultrasound to make sure that uh, the access site is patent after the use of collagen-based large bore closure devices to prevent serious complications uh, like it occurred in this particular patient that needed an intervention to resolve this problem. So in comparison between uh, Manta and other uh, closure devices, primarily suture immediate closure devices and surgery, here we have this bar graph related to major complications and minor complications. And in the table above, we can see the results from the European CE Mark trial with the use of Manta device. We can see also the results from the US ID pivotal trial with Manta and also European Union post-market uh, registry with the use of Manta device. 
What is very important is that um, obviously in clinical trial, we expect better results than in a registry because in registry there is less rigorous uh, analysis and limitations as far as inclusion and exclusion criteria are concerned. We can see that the VARC2 major vascular complications occurred in those three studies somewhere in the range between 1.9 to 4.2 percent and as far as minor vascular complications are concerned they occurred from 0 to uh, 2.7 percent. Now in the bar graphs if we compare the results from the Manta clinical trials and registries we can see the incidence of major and minor vascular complications are significantly lower than with ProStar, ProGlide, and also with the surgical uh, access and repair, and also as far as composite uh, information is concerned for major and minor vascular complications. So uh, obviously the newer generation devices are addressing this problem um, in a positive way as far as avoiding major and minor vascular complications are concerned. So why do large bore access site complications persist? There are numerous factors that play a significant role in this particular problem and complication. Some of them are, as listed here, patient related. Vessel diameter matters, the smaller the vessel the larger the incidence of complications, particularly when you have severe vessel calcifications and stenosis and also tortuosity. Multiple procedures uh, also play a significant role as far as complications are concerned because there's more manipulation in the device and the chances that the device uh, might not perform well. Patients with morbid obesity have a significantly higher incidence of uh, complications and not all devices are designed to work perfectly in morbidly obese patients. Gender also plays a role, uh, not necessarily for any other reason than that females in general have smaller access vessels and when using large sheets, trauma can occur at the access site and also Females that develop uh, vascular disease have, in general, more extensive disease uh, and more atherosclerotic disease of not only access vessels, but also of the iliac arteries and the aorta as well. Vessel tortuosity plays a significant role, and certain devices should not be used with extremely tortuous uh, access site vessels. Presence of peripheral arterial disease of the lower extremities plays also a significant role, as well emergency cases that are um, required uh, to be done on an emergency basis, and uh, they are not, might not be adequate time to appropriately evaluate the access site, such as the use of CT and ultrasound to achieve proper access. There are also numerous physician-related complications that occur. And the, probably the most important one is uh, experience, whether with a suture media closure device or with collagen-based closure device that is currently or that are currently available. Presence of a multi-specialty team is also very important, which means that uh, a surgical backup is of great benefit and presence of a surgeon during procedure, particularly when using large bore sheets, is of importance to prevent or efficiently address and resolve the problem. The use of ultrasound to gain access is extremely important, particularly for the use of large bore sheets in being able to assess the access site and decide whether proper access has been obtained. Also, aggressive manipulation of devices and sheets during the procedure can add to complexity and complications related to the procedure. Inaccurate measurements or lack of measurements, such as CT imaging or ultrasound imaging that is not done 
or is not properly done can be a problem. Prolonged procedures also add to complications, particularly related to thrombosis and ischemia of the lower extremities. And then finally, complications can occur due to different use of devices. For instance, EVAR, TVAR, and TAVAR procedures require the use of large bore devices. And not all devices are created equal, and some of them might perform better in one scenario and might not perform better in another scenario. So the interventionalist has to become familiar with each device that he or she might be using and to determine the idiosyncrasies, advantages and disadvantages of each device in each particular scenario. Now, some of the procedures uh, have devices that are sheath-based, and uh, those might be beneficial as far as avoiding complications because there is less manipulation rather than using a device percutaneously and then uh, placing the sheath after that that can potentially traumatize the access site. Delivery profile matters to a significant degree, and that has been clearly documented in literature and clinical trials. The larger the profile, the higher the incidence of complications. And finally, the use of closure device and familiarity with closure device plays a significant role. So, in conclusions, proper patient selection and adequate imaging are essential to avoid major access site complications. This is particularly true when using large bore access site devices. One should gain experience with access site closure devices to be able to use them judiciously. When having difficulty in advancing large profile sheets or devices through iliac artery, one should anticipate possible complications such as spasm, rupture, laceration, or avulsion, and then complications related to it, such as retroperitoneal bleed and severe hypotension. To avoid those type of problems and to be able to address them in a judicious and expeditious uh, way, one should make sure to maintain wire access until hemostasis is achieved. The contralateral femoral artery access is also very important to uh, prevent or stop retroperitoneal bleeding by inflating a compliant balloon in the abdominal aorta or ipsilateral iliac artery. We should also make sure that uh, we are able to identify the site and type of bleeding. And on the basis of this information, we'll be able to decide what is the most appropriate procedure to resolve the, any particular problem. This is particularly true in scenarios of severe iliac artery damage, such as dissection, laceration, or revulsion, to decide whether interventional procedure is beneficial or possible, or maybe a surgical access, the only reasonable way to address and resolve this problem. One should also have appropriate size endograft available, and this is particularly true for problems related to retroperitoneal bleeding and trauma to the iliac vessel. And that should be uh, available to the operator on routine basis without any significant delay. Also, whenever using large bore devices, such as for EVAR, TVAR, and TAVAR, blood transfusion should be available and uh, should be administered in a very expeditious way without major delay when hypotension occurs. And finally, surgical and anesthesia services should be available whenever using large bore devices, large bore closure devices, and when encountering complications related to the use of large bore closure. Thank you very much for your attention.